Yes, sir. Thank you, Jay. On Ukraine, um, so there was a, a Ukrainian military chopper that was brought down uh, by a, a ground air or an anti-aircraft missile. The uh, Ukraine, uh, Ukrainians are, are sure that this is the type of Russian military equipment on the ground. Um, does the White House feel that it's time to, considering very little movement by Russia, it's time to bring the, the third wave of sanctions mm -hmm. against Moscow? Well, first, let me say that we are disturbed by the ongoing violence in eastern Ukraine, including reports that separatists have shot down a Ukrainian military helicopter, killing 14 people. Now, we cannot yet verify the details of these reports, but we are concerned that this indicates uh, separatists continue to have access to advanced weaponry and other assistance from the outside. Uh, we are also concerned about the fact that a group of OSCE monitors is being held by separatists in Slavyansk. It is unacceptable for observers to be detained, and they should be released immediately. Uh, we urge Russia to use its influence with these groups to get them to release the observers, disarm, and participate in a political process, a process that the vast majority of Ukrainians uh, actively participated in uh, during the elections the other day. And that process needs to continue, both at the ballot box, obviously, but also in dialogue, so that the country can move forward uh, and uh, begin to uh, stabilize its economy and uh, produce a better future for the people of Ukraine. Now, the United States will continue to work with the people of Ukraine and the President-elect to support their efforts to determine their own future. The U.S respects Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. We condemn and reject Russia's occupation and attempted annexation of Crimea. And we remain committed to working with Ukraine and other partners to find a peaceful resolution uh, to the conflict. On the second part of your question, I think that uh, we and our international partners uh, watched very closely the conduct of the uh, election on May 25th. And I think it has been judged uh, broadly, although with some areas of exception, to have uh, come off uh, very well and that the vast majority of Ukrainians were able to vote in a free and fair election. And that is a very positive development. The President, as you know, uh, spoke with President-elect Poroshenko. Uh, and uh, he looks forward to working with President Poroshenko when he's sworn into office uh, as the United States supports Ukraine's desire and the desire of the Ukrainian people to uh, create a future of their own making uh, and not a future that's dictated to them by uh, any neighbors. Uh, so that is a positive development. From one week to the other, Jay, um, <coughs> you, you say that the sanctions, the first and the second wave, have had impact, an impact on the Russian economy. Mm -hmm. I think that has been independently verified repeatedly in reports probably in your publication as well as uh, others network. represented here. Indeed, you're right. But still, it hasn't changed the access to weapons for uh, Ukraine. Well, this is absolutely, you're, you're, you're right. And this is a matter of concern that I just mentioned uh, in answer to your question. Uh, I think it's also true that uh, we and our partners were very focused on making sure that Ukraine was able to conduct uh, a presidential election and that the vast majority of Ukrainians would be able to freely vote in that election. We were very concerned that separatists uh, with the support of Russia, uh, either uh, direct or indirect, would uh, indirect support would uh, disrupt those elections. And it is certainly a positive development that those elections were able to proceed uh, successfully. Chuck. Um, 